December 14th, 1981, 1700 hours. During our previous attack against Poti air defenses, one of our MiG-27 pilots was under AAA crossfire during the final attack. After finishing his duty, he returned to the spot and noticed an excessive movement in the area, surrounding the AAA fire. It appears that our friends are zealous of a particular structure just northeast of Poti. Since our MiG-27s are already being refitted for the trip back to Afghanistan, we will have to rely on our MiG-21s for this attack. We will be carrying KH-66 Grom missiles and SPRD-99 rockets for assisted takeoff. Let's put up some fireworks. This will be our last mission for the moment, as there are political forces pushing for a peaceful solution. Afghanistan is now full of stingers and western weapons. We really don't need to have a second front at the moment. Well, welcome aboard for the final mission of the Brezhnev Incident Campaign. Our task for today, and indeed our final task in this operational theater, is to go and blow up the aforementioned enemy structure with Grom missiles, which is a command bunker. Missiles are slung under the wings along with uh, some wing tanks. We have a jammer slung under the fuselage and uh, the rocket-assisted takeoff pods, which should be exhilarating. I think I've only used them once or twice before. Uh, they should come on automatically when we advance the throttle to full. I have the second afterburner activated, so that should come on as well. And yeah, this takeoff should be a bit of a kick in the arse by comparison to what you want. Clear for takeoff! Yep. Obviously the jammer is why we have this extra control panel up here. I'll switch that on when we're actually close to the target so that we're not jamming our own systems at our home base here. But, well, <laughs> hang on, here goes nothing. Ah! Have the pods come on yet? Yes, they have. Ah! Airspeed's alive, 300, up on the, yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. The stutters are really not helpful in this sort of situation. Well, gear up, head up, and uh, flaps up. Three red on the gear, whack it into neutral. And have the pods burned out yet? Yes, they have. Okay, we'll come out of burner. And I will actually drop the pods. That should have done it, I think. Yes, it did. Okay. And, uh, well, after all that excitement, I didn't even mention what our route is for today. It's. The same one that we are accustomed to for the most part. We fly to the Sukumi Arc Station, then the Gali Station, then we fly due south for 45 kilometers to the target. So, that's pretty much it. I'm going to keep us somewhat lower than usual for this type of mission, just, um, well, principally for the sake of avoiding any kind of detection. The briefing did specify not to expect any particular air opposition this time. Also, why am I not picking up that arc station for Sukumi? Seems to be pointing in the opposite direction. Let's pull up the chart for it. RSBN arc. Sector 3-1. Well, that's what we're in. Uh, maybe I'll hit the one for Gali and see if it comes up with it. We can fly straight there. Just the same, I suppose. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. All right, then. We'll level off at, say, 2,000 meters should probably be enough. Uh, whack us into recovery mode, and we can proceed towards our final target. Approaching the Gully Arc Station, I figured out the cause of my navigation woes. I was using the wrong station. Uh, station 1 is our home base, which is why it was pointing behind me. Oops! Sukumi is number 2, Gully is number 3, so. We got 3 punched in now, so as soon as we pass it, we will turn south and start looking for our target. I will 
also whack the jammer on. I think I have it configured as I would like. That being said. Uh, what's this? I don't know. I don't actually know very much about using the jammer in the MiG-21, so uh, yeah, make of that what you will. Ooh, and we're climbing a little bit just so I can set up a little bit better. And we got lots of fuel. Although I might want to use as much of it as I can to run away with. We'll see. Uh, the Gali Arc Station should be right around here before we cross the river, anyway. Ah, uh, all these old landmarks. I know this area like the back of my hand now. Oh well. I have enjoyed this campaign, but at the same time it's time to move on, I think. Would consider doing something in the MiG-21 again in the future. That being said, if I do, I'm going to revert back to the stable DCS version 2.5.5 because the um, performance issues in 2.5.6 have been a bit of an issue with this campaign. But no matter. Um, actually, we might as well tune up AWACS in case they have anything to tell us. Ah, 103 for 100. Well, that shouldn't be close enough to be a threat yet. And we're at, what, 3,500 meters now. We can probably level off again. I'm going to maintain full mill power just because we have lots of fuel. And that way we're in and out as quick as we can. Since our aircraft are so embuggered with fuel, weapons, and jammers, I think engaging in air combat would be a very foolish thing. Even if the situation arose where it would be necessary, which I suspect it won't. So, that's us appearing to be passing the station. We will turn right to heading 180. And I think that might be our target over there, actually. Splash Bandit. Good job, guys. Yeah, does that look like a bunker to you? It is right on that heading 180. It probably would be. It looks like the picture in the briefing. 099 for 90 at 3500, yeah, whatever. Uh, that could just be a building. Might be closer to Poti. Well, uh, keep a sharp eye out. I might S-turn a little bit if it's supposed to be straight ahead of us. Don't want to be hiding it under the nose or anything. I already have almost everything set up for the Grom missiles. All we have to do is whack on the radar and put it in fixed beam mode prior to initiating our attack. Hmm. Let's have a little peek at the uh, picture of the target in the briefing. Ah, so it's not in a town, it's near a tree line somewhere. Should be actually over by this river here. Oh, I think I see it now, actually. Yeah, it's over there. Yeah, that's definitely it. Alright then, I will set up on that. I will tell my flight to execute mission and rejoin. And hope he doesn't uh, hit it before I do, because that would be no fun. So maybe I should level off and speed up. If that be the case. Yeah, that's got to be it. We're seeing units down there. Well, we'll have to do... We'll have to be quick about this. Then... Let's get ready for it right now. Radar is on in fixed beam mode. I'll initiate my dive towards the target when it's sort of back within, inside that uh, inner canopy rail there. Rail, bar, whatever. And uh, rolling in. Okay, 
Aging primary. Good. We don't even have any countermeasures since our, uh, well, by way of uh, flares or anything because we had those lovely, lovely pods. Okay. Target acquired. Buddy's already firing. Missiles away. And breaking off. Target destroyed. Yeah. Okay, get it back in view just so we can spot any SAM launches, which it looks like there actually was one. And egress as fast as we possibly can. That's a flare going up. Yeah. Probably not on purpose. Okay, radar to standby. Fix beam off. Punch up the arc station for home. For the last time, the lovely site of Gudera Air Base slides into view. Let's let ATC know that. Whoops. Phantom input from my keyboard. That's been something that's been happening lately. Let ATC know we're inbound. Tell my wingman. Oops. Tell my wingman. Two. Return to base. And we will set up for a left downwind onto runway 15, per what they're telling us here. I flew the whole way back on mill power just to try and burn at least some of this fuel, but we're still going to be really heavy, so this will have to be a dainty landing. But we'll do what we can. We will hit stabilize mode on the SAU. Switch off weapons pylons, do some of these things vaguely properly. I could even run through a checklist. Uh... I already turned the gun sight off, yep. Goody. I didn't even lock the nose wheel when we took off. Good grief. I should be ashamed of myself. Oh well. A little bit of power on since I don't want to drop the gear and flaps in the downwind. And so I can burn a little more fuel. I'm a little worried, actually, about this landing. I, um... If I could be bothered, I'd fly around in circles for a while and burn more fuel, but being bothered to do things isn't my strong suit. Is someone landing? Yes. But well ahead of us, so there shouldn't be a concern. Let's adjust my seat in inverted commas by resetting track IR. We can maintain about 500 to 550 for now. We shouldn't be climbing, though. But he's still in formation. Uh, yeah, you don't want to do that all the way down to the ground. Oh, maybe I told him to rejoin by accident before. Uh, actually, will he hear me on this frequency? He might not. Light. RTB. There we go. And I switch back over to ATC. Okay. Not quite time to turn on to base yet. I want to do a long final just so we can get set up reasonably well. Maintain 500. I won't go any slower than that until we get the gear out. I did switch the jammer off, but the light is still on, so hopefully we're not frying any of our own electronics on the ground. And turning base now. And I think I'll get the gear out. There we go. Ooh, we're a little high. And we should be actually turning straight on the final, probably. 
Okay. Very steep turn for the circuit, but, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, 400, we can get a, both stages of flaps. And be aware of the fact that our airspeed will plummet thereafter. Okay. Let's not make this approach so steep. That's not a good idea to make 21. Really. Which is part of the fun because uh, IRL, I'm quite accustomed to flying fairly steep approaches in C172s, but in a MiG-21, if you do that and you don't time the round out perfectly, uh, yeah, there's going to be a bit of a bonk. Uh, 350, that should be okay. For our approach speed, if anything, I want to have our approach speed be on the higher side because we're so heavy. Check landing gear, runway 15. Runway is technically occupied, but we should be safe enough, even if so. I'm, I'm going to ignore it if they tell me to go around. Is essentially what's going to happen. Alright. Well, it would be embarrassing to gomer up the last uh, landing of the mission. Goodness, that bridge was close. Hmm. Go around runway occupied. No. No, thank you. Ah. Oh, we knocked it on a little bit, but uh, whatever. Did the shoot come out? Yes. Okay. I'm always paranoid about that. Uh, I'm gonna have to roll right to the end, aren't I? In that case, I'll drop the chute now so we can uh, coast for a while. Well, final landing was not great, not terrible, but we didn't break anything, so I guess I can't really complain. Well, we're almost back to the starting ramp here at Gudauda, which uh, will probably, well, if one can speculate as to the future of the of my pilot, I suppose that uh, he probably won't be calling this place home for much longer. Probably be trading it for Afghanistan soon enough, which got me thinking that with the upcoming MI24 module, I really, really hope we get an Afghanistan map at some point. There could be so much that could be done with that from flying, well, big 21s or SU-25s for the Soviet Air Force in the 80s to any US aircraft really today, but particularly the A-10C or F-16s of numerous countries that have participated over there. I think that, that, that would be fantastic. Very air-to-ground focused, obviously, but, uh, well, close air support, counterinsurgency, really, um, it's important to be precise, I suppose. you got to be on time and on target. So, yes, that, that would be... That's our parking spot! Ah! Not the one at the end. Or is it? Actually, it might not be. Ah, I don't care. Is the door open on that one? No, this is ours. And they shut the door after my wingman left, but not me. That's interesting. Let's put some lights on. And for the last time, I will see if I can do a perfectly by the book MiG-21 shutdown. Don't count on it. <laughs> the jammer really is off, but the light's on. The light that says... Viskoke. Hmm. I speak some Russian, but I don't know what that means. I should have read the manual, but, you know. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. So, flaps up, speed brakes in, landing and taxi lights off, throttle to idle. Circuit. Thank you, Discord. Circuit breakers. Okay, we'll start flipping everything off. That is not exempted. See if I can get this right. Mangong. Like I said, the order, uh, like I said before, the order of shutting things down in the MiG-21 doesn't matter too much, but it's become a bit of a personal thing. So, APU, fire extinguisher, pumps, inverters, 
flight recorder battery heat stay on. Okay, this stuff can come off then. Is what that means. Throttle can be stopped. And we can pop the canopy. And the jammer controls are in the way. And now the fuel pumps and generators can come off. The flight recorder can come off. Fire extinguisher and APU can come off. Navigation lights, I never turned them on to begin with, this is war, can come off. Inverters and battery heat off. And, come on, eh. And battery off. And I think I did it right this time. And with that, well, that brings us to the end of the Brezhnev incident campaign. Big shout out to the uh, individual who made this campaign, uh, known as Leonardo C on the forums and user files. I will, well, I've linked it before, and I'll probably link it in the description of all of these, if I can remember a uh, link to the campaign. I do highly recommend it. This was actually my second time playing through it. I played through it for the first time about a year ago and really enjoyed it then, so I thought it was worth featuring, and I hope that uh, a few more people will uh, know about it and get the chance to enjoy it now. Not much more for me to say, really. I have been uh, Mr. 660 playing the DCS MiG-21 Brezhnev Incident campaign. I hope uh, it was reasonably enjoyable, and thanks so very much for watching it. Toodles. Much rejoicing greets the news that the Soviet army has driven the traitors to their knees, liberating much of the territory which they had stolen. In light of this mighty triumph, the Soviet army may now recommit itself to its glorious crusade of assisting the brotherly people of Afghanistan in repulsing imperialist aggression.